Welcome back to ADEX Pixel X48 monthly webinar global webcast September series, uh, an event that happened every 8th of the month where we come together over a united cause that is our love for the ocean and also diving. And of course, for this session, uh, our love for underwater photography. So um, without any further ado, let me just introduce to you Adam Hanlon that would be um, telling us a little bit more about this session. So Adam, over to you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, thank you, Nora. Um, I'm Adam Handlin. Um, I'm the editor and publisher of WetPixel. And um, I'm very privileged this morning to be joined by Tim Ho. Um, Tim is a Malaysian photographer who spends a lot of time in Annalao um, in the Philippines um, and produces some amazing imagery um, and is definitely one of the masters of underwater imagery. So um, welcome, Tim. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a long time. I hope uh, COVID's been kind on everyone watching. Good yeah, to be yeah. Here. strange times, eh? And uh, here we are. But at least, at least we have the opportunity to, to meet and discuss things in this virtual format, which is uh, which is a, a, a boon, I think, maybe. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, think... I mean, at least we still get to meet up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's better in person, but it's okay. Yeah, uh, it's okay like this too. So, so in many ways, um, obviously, Tim. Tim's wonderful imagery is what speaks for itself. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to call up some of Tim's pictures. He's kind of shared them with us. Um, we're going to have a look at them. And we're going to try and discuss some of Tim's thought, the way he thinks about creating images um, and, and his thought process that goes into, into creating these images. So um, if we can put up the first picture, please. Here we go. Wonderful. So um, this is a, a wonderful picture of a clownfish and an enemy. Um, how did you get the blur, Tim? Um... I think this, this is one of those uh, slow shutter photos. You slow down the shutter to half a second or even one second. Mm. And just to capture something different. Adam, the mm. thing about photography is <clears throat> if I were to ask 100 photographers to take a picture of the moon, I think all the moon pictures would be more or less the same. So yeah. uh, as far as my photography is concerned and everyone who I come in contact with, I always tell them to try and see if you can do something different mm. because the guy who manages to come up with a new idea is the mm. guy who gets attention. If you look at a full page on Google search of full moon, they will all look the same. Yeah. But if yep. you have one that stands out, now that guy has actually done, done some thinking and that's yep. what makes him stand out from the rest. And, and this is one thing about this particular image that I really like. I mean, obviously, it is a very common subject. I'm not detracting from it. They're a lovely subject, but it's a very common subject. And mm -hmm. if you were to search, if you were to search for an enemy fish or clownfish, again, same thing. You get thousands, probably millions of results that would that would actually all be very similar. And here, obviously, you've employed a really cool creative technique to create this blur. Um, and uh, you know, and I think I think this is this is a really good way of. Of, of introducing you in many ways because that's that's the that's the the mastery of underwater photography it's not about taking pictures it's not about taking pictures of what you see it's trying to create a, a, a um, images in a way that are different and are hence creative so um it's a lovely picture tim do you know what it was taken with which which sort of camera um i think i took this with um a bigger camera i mean i know i'm you i'm known for the compact camera works and yep. you can also achieve this with a compact camera, but I believe this one here was taken on a, maybe a 5D2. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, um, I, I think what we will show here today are pictures taken on all kinds of cameras, but still achievable yep. on the big or the small. And yep. what I like to drive through is the idea is what counts more than the machinery most of the time. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's a, it's a fairly unique concept because most of the time you chat to photographers and they're very involved with, with gear acquisition. And, and whilst that's an important part of being a photographer and a part that I think we all probably enjoy, much more important is the photographer than the equipment. I think that's, that's, that's a, you know, yeah, absolutely. Mm. It's a lovely picture, Tim. Thank you very much. Can, can we have a look at the next one, please? <laughs> there we go. Ah. Yeah, a very, very small fish. Again, taking a picture of this guy would be um, not difficult for, for anyone who finds it. When you find them in the soft corals, you can actually mm. go in there and wait for him to pop his head out and take mm. a picture. 
But what I did with this was I took another torch light with a blue light and I laid it on the sand shooting from the back. So it kind of illuminated the soft coral from the back. So you see the, the, the edges are all blue. Mm. And then from the front, I took a picture of the fish with one strobe, still making sure not to overpower the blue in yeah. the back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very balanced light photo. And, and I, I wasn't aware, obviously, of the backstory behind it, but I was wondering how you got the blue in the background. Um, mm. I, again, this is, the, I mean, there's a great deal of thought involved in this, Tim. How did, how did you, did you see this in your mind or was this an experiment to see what happened? Did you, did you know it was going to look <laughs> like this? How, how did you, how did you come across, how did you come about using that creative technique? Um, Adam, I think, what, what gives me a slightly bigger advantage is the fact that I actually live 10 steps away from the shoreline. Yeah. So for the past eight years, I've been in Anilao, and every time I have an idea, just gear up, grab my stuff, and walk in by myself. So yeah. um, seeing this fish, not for the first time, the first time you go in and you do the norm. You set yeah. it up, and you wait, and you take a picture, and you come back. And the second time, you see exactly the same setting, you, you yourself have to think of, oh, God, am I going to take exactly the same photo again? So yeah. then you start looking around and say, hey, I got a torchlight. So he said, let's put one behind. So I think the norm would be to turn it on and a white light and put it behind and shoot it. And yeah. after a while, you think, yeah, I have a light coming from the back and one coming from the front, but it doesn't really give you any standout. Yeah. It looks like the same. So you pick yeah. up the torch and you start to press the buttons and say, hey, this blue. Let's try blue. And when you try blue and you say, ah, now that's a nice one, then you start to go for uh, adjusting the balance of light between yeah. the blue light coming from the back and the strobe. So neither are overpowering each other. Yeah. 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 So to, to some extent, I think we could probably say that this, is, this image is a result of spending time with the subject as well. I think this is something that many, many photographers or aspirant photographers don't realize is quite how long you're know, creating an image like this, you need time. You know, you have to free your schedule. You have to be prepared to spend a long time with the subject in order to, to experiment, to get results like this. And that's a, you know, that's an important lesson, I think, for all of us. And um, if we expect to be able to get wonderful images like this by something past with a, with a dive guide, it's probably not going to happen. And we No, no, the, definitely we, not. I mean, I, I also <laughs> agree. Many people, they really think that I swam, I saw the fish and I took this picture and swam away. Yeah, 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 I mean, there are many times that I've gone down, set it up, taken the shot, come back, reviewed all the pictures I've taken for the day and deleted them all and yeah. returned tomorrow to attempt it again, to delete yeah. everything again. And on the third day, I managed to get two shots that I thought uh, suit my, my objective. Yeah. So yeah. To, to go in and shoot pictures that are concept-driven or yeah. idea-driven, it's yeah. not a matter of swimming by. And it may so happen that two years down the line, I came across this fish in another country and I have done it before. So I laid out my torches and I took a picture and the dive guide went back and told the whole village that guy is amazing. <laughs> but I have already failed seven days, two yeah. years ago. So yeah. things like this are not magic that just happen to pop up, you know, unless yeah. Yeah, they are lucky days, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. We all have luck, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, can, can we have the next picture up, please, guys? Lovely. So, so again, a, a fairly common subject, um, Tim. You know, uh, let me go be in a beer bottle. Um, you know, it's it's a lovely picture. And um, mm -hmm. how did again? How did you get the wonderful blue light at the end of the bottle? <laughs> same, same, same thing. I mean, I think the the norm for someone who is shooting subjects like this for the first five to ten times in his life. He would yep. have a very black background. Yep. And then on the 50th time that you are shooting the same thing, then you start to think of what can I do? I don't want to take the picture that's exactly like what I've done before. So you start pulling out toys from your pockets and start putting lights here and there. And this yep. one just happened to have a blue light again, which yep. turned out quite well. This was taken on a TG, by the way. So, right. yeah, I mean, this... This is a photo that is not technically difficult. Anyone can do this. 
if you go down with a little bit of an idea, you should be able to get this picture in one dive. So, Tim, when you're so this this example, obviously, you're using again back backlight with a with a blue torchlight. And mm -hmm. do you do you when you're experimenting with ideas, do you document those experiments? Do you write it down somewhere, or do you remember it in your head? Is it is it is it a is, is the creative process for you? Is it is it in your head, or is it something you figure out in an engineering point of view? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's main, mainly mainly in head. You know. You, cannot document so much and write down everything you've done. But yeah. um, I do have millions of photos from, from, from the days I began up until now. So yeah. I do still scroll through archives, not looking yeah. at photo by photo, but scrolling through. And then I'll come across something and I'll stop. And I said, this is one I tried three years ago that I did not succeed. So if I get a chance, I may want to try it again. And I do remember what I've done with the shot. So, the next time I come across the same thing, I give it a go again. And there are many ideas that you just cross out altogether and said, okay, this is not going to happen. So just forget yeah, yeah, all, yeah, forget yeah. about it. it. Yeah, Didn't work. Yeah, we all have those. Yeah, <laughs> I have thousands of those too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I think I think it's, uh, I, I think you must have a better memory than me as, as well, because I, I will often come across the scene and I find myself having to relearn things. I find that I've, I've created an image in a particular way and it kind of worked. I think well, I want to work on that. And then I get underwater and I forget about that. So, so I think having the ability underwater to be able to think, well, okay, I've tried this. It didn't work, but maybe if I do this, I think that's a, that's a very cool ability. I'm not sure. I think it's one that I'm sure you can work at and develop. I'm not sure it's one that I have. Um, but, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's again, as you say, this is a lovely picture, fairly common subject actually technically as you say fairly easy to set up um, mm -hmm. but a completely different take on it you know and and the vast majority of people yes would have the the back of the beer bottle being dark in color whereas this with the combination of the lights on the fishes doesn't have eyebrows but on the fishes where the, where the fish would have eyebrows lovely yeah really lovely yeah. very easy shot yeah, and, and a creative kind of, it should be inspiration for anyone who's, you know, is, is in the muck diving areas. These, this is something that, you, that certainly most dive guides to be able to find you. Um, and, you know, and you could certainly work as a producer subject that produces an image like this. Lovely here. Yeah. Mm. So, so can we have the next one, please, um, team? <clears throat> ah, wonderful. Cool. So. I, I love, I love separation, uh, Adam. I believe separation is, a, is one of the key elements of great underwater photography. And to me, there's a contrast separation and mm -hmm. there's a depth of field separation. Mm -hmm. I, I love separation. And of course, if, if you took this fish head on, then you will mm -hmm. have two eyes sharp. You will see the lenses on the eyes, but you will mm -hmm. lose the mouth and you will lose the tail and you will lose a lot. It's, it's a mm -hmm. nice concept, mm -hmm. but to shoot through the leaves, you know, like in a safari, you're shooting through the leaves and in, in one clear focal pane, there's a tiger that is sharp. Now that yeah. creates something that's very, very um, exciting to me. So yeah. I have invested many a dive to try to really um, try to perfect the depth of field separation. I, I love this, this kind of photography. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, perhaps Tim, maybe I could ask you to define what do you call separation. So let's let's boil this concept back down. What mm. what is separation? What what is it? I mean, <coughs> okay, geez, depth depth of field of contrast, but what is it? I mean, it's it's that separation between your the star of the image and what's in front and what's behind. Okay. Because if you yeah. have if you have this anemone like we see in front of us. The, the fish and the coral is already very similar in color. Yep. So if you did have everything clear, um, you will find that the fish kind of blends into its background. And that's what yep. I, 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 I call uh, they're fighting for attention. Yep. Yeah. So yep. what I yep. like is that the subject is not fighting with anyone for attention. It is the star of the image. Yeah. Everything that is around it becomes complementary to the to the concept. Yeah. It will not steal away from the fish. The fish yeah. is the star. No one is fighting with him for attention. 
But I think the other thing, the other thing I really like <laughs> about this image, and, and I think illustrates it as well, that this, that your concept, the separation concept, is we still have the animal in its environment. It's very obviously still in an enemy. I mean, another way of taking this picture would have been to get a snoot, to shine a direct beam of light onto the fish, and to completely darken the background but mm. all you get then is you still get the star of the show but you lose the environment in which it lives and i think particularly you've got lovely tones here we've got the the purples on the tips of the enemies coming through which gives it some some extra visual interest but mm. but i think i think that for me the you know the, the the really clever part of this shot is is that you know it's very definitely still its environment and i you know your your analogy of the tiger in the trees is the same thing you know a picture of a tiger tiger's beautiful you know Clownfish are beautiful, but that becomes a portrait of an animal. And actually, mm. the clever part of the shot is that the animal is still in its environment, it's still within where it lives, and very obviously so. And I think, I think again, you know, obviously it's, it's beautifully shot. This Tim, you know, it, it's it's uh, the, the the sharpness is exactly where it needs to be. The eye is beautiful, the mouth is beautiful, the profile of the profile of the animal is lovely. But again, you know, we've still got these lovely kind of um, an enemy tentacles wafting around. And you can always imagine, you know, if you've ever seen an enemy, a clownfish an enemy, you can always imagine the tentacles moving as, as it sits in there. So, yeah, it's lovely. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, technically, <laughs> technically like perfect, Tim. How many, how, how, how many pictures of an enemy fish do you have? Oh, tens of thousands. <laughs> I, I love them. I love them. No, I think anemones are beautiful. And yeah. to get that nice fish in there it, in its perfect setting, that, that is just a nice photo. And it's the photo that nobody can say you set up. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, Impossible. It's no you cannot yeah, set yeah. it up. You no, wait. No, no. It's time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And time, time and, and, and shutter clicks, you know, you, uh, we all have experiences of, of shooting an enemy fish and, you know, in every they turn and they move very quickly and um, mm -hmm. possibly, possibly some, some of the audience are aware of these, this is not sitting still, this fish, it's moving. Um, mm -hmm. And Tim's managed to catch it in that perfect plane of focus at, at a very specific time. And that takes, I mean, I, th I think the only way is, is it takes time and, and lots of failed attempts. <laughs> yeah, would have been better if it were yawning, but well, you, you take what yeah, you get. <laughs> I, I like I like the mouth profile as it is. Actually, I'm I'm happy with it like this. It's lovely. Um, okay. Can we have the next one, please, team? Wonderful. <clears throat> okay. So tell me about this image, Tim. I, I okay, maybe I'm going to give it back to you. Tim. Tim shared me these, these these images with me um earlier before the before the presentation and. I looked at this image and, it, you know, it's a very, very dramatic image. Um, you know, there's a, there's real drama. Obviously it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful portrait, um, but it's very eye-catching. So um, go on, Tim, tell me about this one then, please. This, this is the norm. This is a cliche. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, this is again, another very simple fish that is everywhere. If you, mm. if, you, if you had choice, this would not be the, sh the fish you would shoot. You would yeah, swim yeah. past a thousand of them in a dive. But I mean, there are days that the, the, there's nothing much around. So you invest time on the simple things and you again try to make them stand out. Of course, you see a lizard fish and you shoot it from a distance. You get a very simple lizard fish. Uh, mm. If you had it mount, uh, perched on top of a rock, you could play mm. with the depth of field separation again to make the rock a mm. bit blurry, the fish very sharp, and then the background blurry. But mm. um, I, I just had nothing much to play with that day. So I said, okay, so let's invest. And when I say invest, I, I mean time. That mm. means you just forget all the tank banging and the dive masters telling you to come here and come there. You just yeah, stay yeah. there until the fish gets comfortable with you and you inch in closer and closer and closer he moves a little bit you inch in again and after a point he will get quite comfortable with you he knows now that you are not there to eat him yeah and then he stays and as yeah. he stays then you are able to really come in close and try to get those portraits and in in yeah. this shot it's nothing special but i i just like the the clinical precision and yep. the 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 cleanliness of the shot yeah so i put this in because i thought the eye was sharp the face is quite well lit up there isn't much dirt around it and 
I got a facial. So I thought, yeah, simple, short, but really, really, it's punchy. It is very punchy, yeah. And I, and I think I think it's a good lesson, you know, in these strange times where, where many of us can't travel as much as we would normally be doing. You know, this is very much the type of subject that is most places. So, so you know, most places that have seashores will have a subject not dissimilar to this. So it's a, it's a really good um, reminder that we don't necessarily need to travel to the ends of the earth to get amazing images. It's nice when we can, but when we can't, you know, this is an, we should look for opportunities that are that are close to home. And this is, you know, again, as you say, it's a lizard fish. You know, we, we, we've all seen thousands of these on dives and typically they get ignored. And yet, you know, it has it has the beauty and power um, to produce an, a portrait like this. So, yeah. I mean, if, if Adam, if, if you can't get to Africa to shoot the lions, uh, or if you can't get to the safaris to shoot all those wild animals, well, you shoot your neighbor's cat and dog. That's <laughs> you know, you, yeah. you take what you get, you know, yep. and just try to make great photos. It's not always about the subject. It's it's. Uh and, and I think this goes back to what you spoke about before is this mental process of looking at subjects and not getting not getting caught up in this idea that every picture needs to be a rare or elusive or a, you know, a specific species. Really, it's about getting you, could, you as, as, a, as, a, as an underwater photographer, we should look at a subject and say, well, how can we produce an image of this subject? Not, well, it's another you know, an enemy fish or another lizard fish, you know, let's find a way of shooting this in a really creative and beautiful way. And this is a, it's a really good example of that. So, mm. yeah. Can we have the next picture, please? Um, fantastic. Okay. So I assume it's a conchai. Yeah. Conchai. Where was this? Sim simple stuff. No, really simple stuff. Where was this from, Tim? I believe this is in Anilao. Plenty of them yeah. in Anilao. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But often the con the, the con shelf doesn't have the lines. Some mm. have the lines, some don't. So when I saw this one with the lines, I thought it was a, a bit more abstract. If I could make mm. the eyes stand out and all those lines in the background, just adding the abstract feel to the shot. Again, mm. still the concept that I like is the separation. So nothing is mm. fighting with the eye. You know the eye is what's what mm. I am shooting, mm. but the lines of the con shelf are, are, are the reason why I, I like this photo. It, it might be worth just explaining to, to the audience, for those who aren't familiar, that this is, a, <coughs> this is the eye of a, of a shellfish. Um, of a, uh, it, it looks like a, I mean, the best description for those that haven't seen one is it looks a bit like a snail as it moves across the bottom of the sea. And, and this is its eye. So, so this is very small. That's also worth pointing out. You know, we look at it in the image and it's hard to get a sense of scale. And it has, this picture has this wonderful abstract feeling to it, um, which I think is part of the, the joy of it. I'm not, I'm not sure whether explaining what it is does it any favours. <laughs> um, uh, I think a con shelf would be the size of your palm to your fingertip. That would be the size yeah. of a corn shelf. It yeah. would have a line across, and that's yeah. where the 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 animal actually comes out and has its. It's like a snail that walks. Yeah. So he yeah. it it does have eyes, and yeah, you if you look closely enough, you will normally see it has two eyes. Yeah. So uh, this is a simple shot on again another one of those days that. Nothing much is happening, and hey, it is a con shelf, so <laughs> let's let's spend some time with it. Uh, Adam, it's I, I think showing me the most rare nudie branch uh, and a photo of it versus something that is extremely, extremely simple, like the lizard fish that no one will even bother to look at twice. Mm. When you have two good pictures, I will always go with the lizard fish. Yeah. Because I find that the person has has put in effort to make something very normal, outstanding, and yeah. I'm 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 of that preference. So, I mean, you you can have a beautiful runway supermodel in front of you, yeah. and a very normal, not model like lady, but just beautiful. And I I, I like the norm, something that I, is I, normal I, that stands out. I think in, in many ways, I mean, and this ties into an important theme that I have as an underwater photographer, and, and, I, and I'm sure you echo this, is that our job is to really show 
the oceans and their inhabitants and the best possible lives. And that is our that's we that's where we employ our skills. You know, when 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 the vast majority of the planet can't go underwater to see things that we see and that we're privileged to see um you know our job is to take those subjects and make them beautiful so it's our job to put every animal on the runway and that includes the the rare and exotic as well as you know the very common and and yep. so often so often i quite agree with you the very common stuff gets ignored because we're all after these rare elusive subjects and actually one of the best images i know uh, the, the, the most best images i see are, are actually simple creative takes on very common animals and and you know i think i think there's there's as photographers we really really need to bear that in mind and your portfolio here that you're showing us here really illustrates that you know these are these are these are subjects that most people could find on most dives in, in, a, in a dive site like Anna Lau. um the dive guide is never going to point them out to you so going to no. look over there's a conch eye but it's <laughs> up to you to kind of, it's up to you to kind of think well okay creatively what can i do with this yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. Um, I think we have a couple more. Can we have the next one, please, team? Ah, oh, I think this is the final one, actually. Um, yeah. So what, what's going on here then, Tim? We've got an action shot. It's an anemone that's spawning. Hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, it's seasonal. It doesn't happen very often. But when, when the anemones are in their spawning season, then they, they, they have this cloud coming out. And then uh, the water carries it so that they can reproduce and stuff like that. I am not a scientific guy, so I cannot give you more information. But when I saw it, of course, the first thing to do would be to just take a photo of it. And mm. then I felt that I didn't see, I didn't see this, this, this beautiful uh, occurrence mm. represented in the image that I had just shot. So mm. I went sideways and I moved around and eventually... I settled for this one, which I I like. I think mm. it's not. It's an anemone. There's no fish there. There's no shrimp there. There's nothing. It's just an anemone. But I managed to catch that that release. Yeah, yeah. I just like the I just like the photo. Yeah. I I, I, I like it very much. I can't much. tell you more. Yeah, no, I, I like it very much too. And and when when you sent me the images before the presentation, it was certainly one that caught my eye. And, and I mean, it, it's. I think you're right. I, I'm. I think possibly, obviously, you have you've done a beautiful job with the lighting. You know, we've got the drop off in the background. You've picked up the picked up the actual plume of of gametes being released, which is which is you know technically technically is 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 perfect. But as you say, in terms of an image, you haven't really done anything particularly fantastically kind of different there it's just a really really nicely constructed image but i think it shows this this incredible scene in a beautiful way i mean my first thought was um it might my my brain automatically went to a kind of kind of an eruption like a like a volcanic okay, eruption no. you know mm. um and that that you know it reminds me of that and that, that's where my brain went straight there without without even questioning it and 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 i think that's a in many ways that's something that we we often happens sometimes by accident i don't know tim maybe you're good at doing this but we often find that images that resonate with audiences resonate because they have similarities to something else um, and yeah. so in this case you know the fact that it in my mind anyway it represents a volcanic eruption and um, uh, you know, volcano smoking um, I, I think that 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 for me particularly makes this image memorable um, it's a tp with somebody cooking inside <laughs> there you go. We all, we all, we all have different ways of hanging this on us, don't we? That's, um, yeah, it's excellent. Um, so, I mean, I think, I think that's a, that's a very good illustration again of of you know how we can we can how these images are wonderful things to to create a, a sensation in somebody else. And I think ultimately that's our goal here, isn't it? When, when we create imagery and we want to engage audiences, we want to make those audiences question and 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 and, and be be amazed by the beauty that we see. And, and this is a really nice example, really good example of of, of how to do that. So mm, Tim. You. Yep. Beautiful imagery. Thank you for sharing them with us. Um, it's, it's 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 um, it, it's been a it's been a wonderful journey. Um, I, I hope it's one that we can make again soon, possibly even in mm -hmm. person. If you were to give an underwater photographer who is 
trying to be so so an experienced underwater photographer who's taking pictures and wants to make memorable images that will resonate with an audience and you only allowed one bit of advice to give them <laughs> what would that bit of advice be please whatever comes out of on your camera after investing time and shooting something should not look like anything you have seen on underwater macro or scuba shooters it should not <laughs> you, you, when, when when i come out from a dive and i have this image in my camera that to the best of my knowledge i have not seen it before that's the day i am happy i think that's wonderful advice so so be unique be your own style create your own style don't necessarily do what everyone else does and i think that's a that's that's a that's a very very good advice for um for us all um so um thank you so much tim again um it's been a priv it's been a privilege um, thank you thank you i as i say i hope we can meet again soon maybe in 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 less virtual way and 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 mm -hmm. i'll come and i'll come and see you in analog if i may yeah welcome welcome <laughs> i'd love to do that so thank you very much um, thank you we'll very much hand we'll hand back to the team i think any minute they should be coming in um yes <laughs> Um, or maybe we just keep talking. I'm happy to keep talking. Are you happy to keep talking too? <laughs> They've gone for coffee break and left us on the horn. Uh, Nora's here. <laughs> Thank you, Nora, very much. Um, Thank you. Um, take care, Tim. All the best. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you Bye. so much. Thank you.